Hello everyone and welcome to the EGFH Season 1 Week 4 in League of Legends. Today we're starting off with a match between the Farmington Pioneers and St. Thomas More's Fair Fail. This match will be followed up with St. Thomas More taking on the New Bring London the Whaler Esports later on this afternoon at 4.30 EST. I'm your caster Superman and I'm joined here by Vic Sharp. Thank you so much, your man. This is a crucial match for these teams. With playoffs coming up so soon, Fairfail have a chance to really try and lock themselves in to one of those top two seeds. And Farmington, they're running out of time to find a win this year. Yeah, I mean, they're down 0-5 in the series overall, meaning a win could do a lot for them to try and see if they can bring themselves up to the level of Stonington, only up by a couple of wins over them. But fair fail here, four and two overall. If they can get a couple of wins today and the Green Knights drops a few, they'll be tied for first place coming into next week. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And something to note for everyone, we are on the brand new preseason patch. Runes Reforged are here. Chaos reigns on Summoner's Rift. It's gonna be fabulous. And we have a lot of bands already coming out. Twitch Katarina Tristana uh, on the side of Farmington and then Draven, Lux, and Kha'Zix fanned out from fair fail. Yeah, these are great bands. It's always interesting to see how the meta immediately can shift when it comes to a new patch, let alone a patch of this caliber. We got the entire rune and mastery system revamped, changed drastically. There's not even very many things that have even the same name existing in the runes reforged as used to be in the old mastery system or runes, etc. Everything feels different. I was playing through a, a number of just trolley matches, normals on Summoner's Rift with some of my friends yesterday just to try and try some things out. But really, I've got to say, with the plus 20 or so additions of base armor to a lot of ranged champions uh, and the like, there's some really base changes to the game that make it feel entirely different to play. Absolutely. And Superman, these picks are coming out so fast. Cho'Gath, Rek'Sai, and Echo from Farmington. We have Trundle, Lee Sin, and Orianna. So we were talking some before this match started about some of the picks we've expected. And I've seen almost nothing we've talked about yet. <laughs> yeah, there's actually that Janna ban that, as a Janna player, I love to see either pick ban for this champion. Right now, there is the... A uh, summon airy keystone that is essentially speaking of lulu essentially like lulu's picks passive where this keystone allows yes, the abilities you cast on enemies and allies to reposition this little fairy that you have as a companion and so for champions like Channa, for like lulu then casting a shield or a heal or th that kind of a thing will actually give an additional shield a stronger shield uh, to your target, or if you're casting an ability on an enemy, say using a uh, Caitlyn auto attack even, or a Caitlyn Q, that's going to actually uh, send Airy, this little fairy, to your target to deal additional damage. So it, it's really interesting to see how these keystones play into these choices. And we see those healers, the shield champions, um, getting banned out because they're still rather strong. There are a number of keystone uh, and, and runes combinations that make those still very strong. But I'm excited to see some of these jungle picks. These are two champions we haven't seen in a while. Absolutely. And like you were mentioning, the Arden sensor meta may be dead, but healing supports are still here to stay. And yeah, Rek'Sai and Lee Sin, picks that we haven't seen lately. It's been the era of the tanks. But I want to talk about these bot lanes now is, you know, the final picks coming in. We've seen Vayne, we've seen Vars, and we've seen a Tom Kinch walked in. One of those picks, again, that seemed to dominate the Rift for so long, only to fall so far out of favor. Indeed, yeah. So Tarek is one of those shield heal supports. It looks like he's hovering Ignite. We'll see if he actually intends to maintain that summoner spell. But I actually like uh, this bottom lane here for the blue side. Like We got the Varus. Now there's actually... So it used to be that attack speed Varus was the name of the game, right? You rush that Rage Blade. Vayne almost did the same thing. And whoever can really complete that item first gets a really strong power spike. And they build that like on hit super damage into the late game. But there's this interesting thing where if Varus is building attack speed, then he actually can get massive amounts of attack speed much earlier with this uh, keystone called Lethal Tempo, where you get an 80% attack speed steroid after attacking an enemy champion for a short duration. 
And it actually allows you to go beyond the attack speed cap. So you can go beyond that 2.5 attacks per second mark. But you can, this is immediate. It, not, not that you'd be breaking 2.5, but that you would get that massive, absolutely massive attack speed steroid. So Varus already gets that, even without proccing his passive or having the items in the first place. So if he builds that on hit, and say he starts with a recurve bow, he can be doing significant damage already really early on. Same with Vayne. Her W, with that true damage, she can get a lot more of those triple procs with that much attack speed. So we'll have to see how things turn out. Yeah, absolutely. I will say one thing I'm a little surprised about, and this maybe feels like both teams may still be trying to feel themselves out with this patch, because nothing here is too surprising. You know, we don't see any weird picks or besides the junglers, this still looks like a draft I would have expected to maybe see a week ago. Super. So I don't I don't know. I'm I'm not sure if teams are just not comfortable yet with the kind of fringe picks that we've seen come out from the the changes to the runes and masteries. Mm, yes. So there's actually uh, a really cool ability called Phase Rush that I, I'm hoping this Echo is running because it's a really fun one. He already gets that attack speed from his passive. He gets his three uh, abilities to hit someone. But uh, instead of having to do a percentage, think, think old Storm Raiders Surge. Instead of having to do a percentage of your target's max health, in a short t period of time. Instead, it's almost like Thunderlord's proc, where you just have to land three attacks or abilities, and then you're granted that same level of move speed. So this Echo, with his uh, all-ins versus running out, he actually gets that almost every single fight. It has a short, a short cooldown, and of course a short duration. It's about three seconds from anywhere from 10 to 40% move speed, based on your level, but it only has a 15 second cooldown. So pretty much, 100% uptime almost, right? That you're just going to have this Echo running around the map no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. And as we kind of tick down with the last 50 seconds or so on the Spectator delay, the lane we haven't really talked about, the this more standard lane, top lane, Cho'Gath against a Trundle. Now, obviously, both can push decently in the early game. But the biggest thing for the advantage for St. Thomas More here is that Trundle post six with that ultimate. Yeah, there's always a really strong team fight ability. The Trundle, using that ultimate means he's going to steal those resistances away from the enemy's tank line and, of course, be able to fight his Q, stealing attack damage from his target. If he can get onto an AD carry, that's definitely bad news. But, interestingly enough, Grasp of the Undying still exists now as a keystone that you can take for tanks. But, additionally to how it used to be, with just the bonus damage and heal based on your own max health, Every time you do proc it, you're granted incremental, very small, but 2%. Uh, you're healed for 2% of your max health, but you increase your max health permanently by 5 every single time you proc that keystone. So things can get cr pretty crazy with this Cho'Gath. He could get, over the course of a game, maybe 100 bonus health, right? If he procs it 20 times in a good 30-minute game, that's pretty good. And if he yeah. can get 100 bonus health, that directly translate into true damage for his ultimate. Like, that's that's pretty crazy that now there's a lot of things like that. And there's actually more, more uh, runes that also increase max health. In that same tree, the resolve tree for this Cho'Gath, then every eight monsters or minions that die near you, you don't even have to be the one that lasted them, every eight monsters and minions that die near you permanently increase your max health by 0.2%. So that's a percent, too. We know that Cho'Gath already builds max health. So that's going to be a significant increase over the course of a game as well. Absolutely. But as we get into the loading screen and get onto the rift for this game between the Farmington Pioneers and St. Thomas More's Fair Fail, I have to ask you, Superman, who is going to take this win? Does Farmington finally get a win on the board, or does St. Thomas More get ever closer to that two seed? You know, I, I did think coming into this match that it would be a quick and easy match here for Fair Fail. And we've seen them so dominant. And of course, their master tier mid laner doing work on the last game we saw here on stream. That Ezreal pick did work. First blood into just huge snowball lead. But you know what? I actually like the draft here from Pioneers much better. I feel like they actually have a significant front line. Tom Kench is really good for protecting someone from getting just chased down or deleted at the front end of a fight. 
I think Echo's really strong right now. And then, of course, if Rek'Sai can actually track this Lee Sin, then the early game pressure that a Lee Sin uh, Oriana could have around that mid lane will not be as potent. And hopefully this Echo can remain safe against, obviously, the skill disadvantage as Anua1 is probably the highest rated player in our tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've had a chance to look at some of those keystones on the loading screen. Does anything stick out to you, Superman? Does anything surprise you from what we've seen? Well, just scanning through here, we do see the grasps of the Undying for the top lane. I like the Electrocute. It's basically the new Thunderlords here from these junglers. Although, Rek'Sai, I, I haven't seen him be that damage uh, champion, right? Like that Almost like an assassin that we used to see from uh, Rek'Sai way back when. It's more tanks coming out from the jungle, right? So I'll, I'll be interested to see how that plays through. However, uh, we got Echo and Orianna choosing those different ones. We got Phase Rush here for Orianna. I like that choice. I've never seen an Orianna pick it so far, even through the limited um, exposure I have had so far. But I like that. It allows you to reposition it. Normally, that's one of the hardest things about Orianna is being in the right place at the right time so that your ball can be in the right place at the right time. But Phase Rush will let you do that. And again, it's not based on the max health damage. It's based off of just landing three abilities. So... It looked like down there in the bottom lane, I didn't get a chance to check precisely what keystones these AD carries were running, or the supports, but it should be a really fun match from that mid and top. The jungles, they're going to be really aggressive early on, so we'll have to see how that plays through. Yeah, absolutely, and we are finally getting on to the rift for this game. We'll have to see if any teams maybe try an aggressive level 1 start trying to catch a, a team off guard. I do believe we saw a Tom Kinch go with Grasp, Grasp of the Undying, if I remember correctly. Rigged. So, will be interesting to see how he puts that to use. But, pretty standard start. No one's gonna look for the aggressive minutes. play, or the maybe win or die play for level 1. Right, yeah. I don't think you'll see those level 1 invades. I like this Varus here. You can see where he's standing in the enemy jungle. Uh, or in his jungle, excuse me. He's setting up for a possible invade. There's this cool uh, ability. It's not a keystone, but it is one of those runes called Poro Ward, where after a short channel, it's one and a half second, uh, of entering into a bush, then you place a Poro in it. And it and it's only in one bush, so it, if you place it in one, you go to another, it'll place it over there if you, land up, if you stay in the bush for over a second. Um, and the Poro basically acts as... Similar to a Callista Sentinel, right? As soon as somebody walks into it, they're revealed uh, for a short period of time, and the Poro runs away. Right? So uh, it's it's kind of cute. It's a fun little thing, and of course it chases you as you're in the bush. Um, but it actually is a cool little vision uh, ability that can grant you some advantages if played correctly. Yeah, absolutely. One thing to note that I don't know if the teams have yet, Superman. Um, look at Dreamy's items on this Tarek. Uh, he did have like a mini disconnect at the beginning. I'm not sure if he noticed that he doesn't have items. Uh, he might walk up here to try and auto them. I think by now he would have noticed that he doesn't have items, but it's too late to recall, right? So, it kind of sucks that that's the case, but... We got Allure Love here on this vein. Actually has, um, the equivalent of Warlord's Bloodlust that, uh... Stacking up to 100 stacks into a, uh, a healing proc, but Lethal Temple was the choice for this virus. That's the attack speed steroid. Has a short cooldown, but it is really, really strong. So level 2's come out here for this bottom lane. Same thing with top lane. Just a little bit of trays. There's a Grass Moon Dying proc. Of course, Trundle and Cho'Gath. Gonna be a wet noodle fight pretty much through the, uh, throughout the entire match until there's level sixes come through there. Then then things get a little bit more hairy up there in the top lane. Yeah, but on Nuo, doing what we saw him do last week, already pushing up on this Echo. Echo's at half health, already burned through one of his pots. He is down in XP, it's just barely, but it could be enough to make a difference. And we see the junglers finding each other. We may have the first little fight. Is Rek'Sai going to get the knock up? And they're just kind of wet noodling fight, but it's not I'm wet noodling sure. with these two junglers. And who's going to be the one to get the kill? It is oh going to be Umbrisk on the Rek'Sai with first blood. Yeah, they both got that electrocute proc off. That's the triple hit damage proc, similar to the old Thunderlords. 
It's actually really strong and it's scaling. It doesn't scale off of your total AP or AD. It scales with time and levels. So, and that was really strong. Interesting that neither one of them chose to flash. They were playing, kind of playing chicken there in the river. But you know, it's ultimately whoever loses the game of chicken. And it was Leeson who turned away first and he ended up paying the price. First blood and a double buff reset go over to this Rek'Sai. Yeah, and on Nuo, maybe wanted some revenge there. He used the ghost trying to get around onto Umbrisk, wasn't able to get it. And we're actually seeing Trundle taken so low in this top lane. Cho'Gath, not ahead in CS, but trying to exert a little bit of lane pressure. Yes, he is. And he's doing it quite well. He's getting more of those uh, Grass of the Undying procs. You can always uh, pay attention closely to those types of abilities where they'll do so much more damage as the game goes on and these champions up here in the top lane build more health items to not only increase the healing they get from that kind of stuff but that to increase oh here down in the bottom lane is a huge fight though yeah nyx is taking well there's gonna be the ignite the heal is burned one more auto will do it the ignite takes him down dreamy gets the kill and now epic evan is in trouble he's trying to get away procs the gray health and that will allow him safely but Winning bottom lane there for Allure Love and Fairfail. But meanwhile, the junglers have found each other again. Umbrisk looking for this fight. Leeson does not want it. The flash in, the flash out. They're trying to come to his defense. And now Umbrisk forced to run away. Such will help. No, why did Leeson run back forward? He goes down. Umbrisk in so much trouble now, though. Going to probably pay for it with his life. Who gets the kill? It will be on Nuo. That was a long fight, Superman. Yeah, a lot of skirmish down there in the bottom lane coming into the river. And unfortunately, it was Nyx falling uh, to the vein early. It ended up being the kill credit for this Tark for that Ignite. But it was just Ignite heal for the heal flash of Varus. Ign Exhaust wasn't used by this Tom Kench, nor did he eat and save his Varus. I'm not sure you should choose that champion if you're not going to use those get out of jail free cards that he can provide. But yeah, then as you noted in the river, Lee Sin getting caught out by the level four up level Rek'Sai. And that double buff for Exile is going to do so much damage trying to do that flash knock up, but didn't have to knock up back up. Oh, nice ultimate in mid though. Yeah, Nuo going to flash in. That's an easy kill. Add that to his 30 CS lead. And I'm getting some deja vu, Superman. Yeah, I know. We've seen him pop off from mid lane and now he's 2 0. Oh. He had that double buffs get transferred over from that little skirmish in the river. We ended up taking down the Rek'Sai, but we got level six here in the top lane for Trundle. I might see something come of that. I'll we'll have to yep. see here in this bottom lane. We got the Varus and Tom Kench are pushed up again. And though we have seen... Okay, actually here in the top lane, nice <laughs> flash over. <Jeez. laughs> that wasn't even a fight, man. I was ready to go and it just ended up with a Cho'Gath chomp. So obviously you have to be so worried about that playing against the Cho'Gath. But again... Cho'Gath just not really having CS pressure, but trying to find a way to get lane, but possible fight in the bot lane. They're going on to the Tom Kench. Lee Sin is here. He's going to look for it. The Grey Health now goes down. Allure Love gets the stun into the wall. He is going to go down. It is Lee Sin that picks up the kill, but Rek'Sai trying to answer, jumping onto Anuo. He takes two tower shots, and it's an easy kill for Umbris. That's pretty good. Here's a fight in the top lane too, though, that Trundle wants revenge. Yeah, they're just going everywhere. Trundle still does have the ultimate. He might try and go for it. But meanwhile, Nyx is taking so low. He goes down to Allure Love. He stayed way too far. Umbrisk finds the Lee Sin yet again. These fights are all knowing and all over the map. The Chomp goes down. The Rek'Sai ultimate gets it. Down goes Lee Sin for the third time in the game. Dang, yeah, like Vic, this is insane. So much fighting. We're only seven minutes in and there's already been 10 kills. And what I what I think is insane, to be honest, is not just the level of skirmishing, but this Rek'Sai. I mentioned it, Champion Select, in the loading screen, how I was like, I don't know about this damage. Like, why would you want to go Rek'Sai unless you can track the enemy jungler and that helps with your team play? What's actually happening here? But he's four and one. He's four and one with the, with the level and CS advantage over this Lee Sin. He just bullied Lee Sin to death off of Lee Sin's blue buff. If he could deny that even further as he's back in mid, top lane's fighting as well. This, this map is just full of fights. These teams are like, okay, we don't know what's going on with runes and masteries. We're just gonna play this game out to where everyone gets all the gold they need. The Echo is going to go in, not quite going to hit the stun though, and that'll keep on Nuo alive for now. With both summoners down though, the Orianna does have to be relatively careful in that mid lane, even with a 40 CS lead. 
Yeah, she's down her flash, and we know that Rek'Sai has a ton of damage. He's probably sitting on a good chunk of gold. Yeah, he's sitting on almost 1,800 gold here. There's a fight in the bottom lane. Yeah, Lord Love, you know, dashed in a little aggressively there with the tumble, but not enough damage at this point to take down a Tom Kench. Yeah, it takes a, a lot longer of a fight to get that to happen, but I, li I like the aggressive play from this vein. We talked about how those uh, attack speed builds can be really, really strong. Vayne choosing to go, instead of the attack speed sir, go for the, uh, essentially the same as old Warlord's Bloodlust. Uh, I think it's called Fleet of Foot now, but yeah, there's just these mini trades. Allure loves getting those nice auto attacks off, but here up near mid lane, you can see on your mini map, those junglers are tracking each other once again. Yeah, Umbrisk tried for a gank in the mid lane. It did not work. Anua was playing far enough to his safe side of the map to get away, even without those summoners. And it's just continuing to try and bully the Echo. Umbrisk gonna go for it again, but can he find it this time? Uses the smite to get the move speed change, but Anua with a lot of damage going for it is almost gonna take Umbrisk down. He does go down with the last auto, and now it's a blue buff to Anua. Can the Echo get away from this? Lee Sin comes in, picks up the kill for himself. Yeah, the, the Echo knew he was down. It didn't want to use his ultimate to try and get that health back. Maybe perhaps live. He had no flash. He didn't think he had the damage to turn around and get a kill back on the Orianna. But as you said, blue buff transfer, and that's a huge boon for an Orianna. Absolutely, especially considering it was the enemy blue buff. Their blue buff still stands, can still go over to Onuo when he wants it. So interesting choice from St. Thomas Morse to not take that Infernal Drake when they arguably had pressure and the jungle advantage, but we'll have to see if they just come back for that a little later. Yeah, I like that they're pressing in the advantage in every single lane. You can see that the CS advantages are just piling up. Stark contrast in the mid lane. Bottom lane getting there and top lane as well, even though the Trundle fell in a 1v1 to this Cho'Gath, he still got the CS advantage and honestly, but as far as global gold goes, overall, that makes him about equal with a 20 or so CS advantage over that Cho'Gath. That equals out that kill. Yeah, and you can see the Cho'Gath really wanting help in that top lane, pinging for it. But Umbrisk is just deciding, I'm going to kill this Orianna, or at least try to. And here we go. I just mentioned it was the enemy blue buff they got. So thank you very much, blue buff refresh. Yeah, Epic Evan might be getting caught again. He is indeed. The ultimate's gonna come down from Tarek, and Epic Evan does go down. Now Nyx is on the wrong side of the fight. Allure Love is chasing for it. Who's gonna be the one to get it? The flash comes out, but Lee Sin picks up the kill. Dreamy does not fall to the tower. Clean dive, I'm going to say, from St. Thomas More. Umbrisk looking for the top lane. Gonna go for the smite. They get the knockup onto the trundle. He is silenced. He uses the ultimate. He's trying to get away. He's trying to trade it back. Flashes out, still is not dead, but the Prey Seeker gets it this time. Yeah, just that last little damage will do it. Oh, Dreamy might actually fall to the tower, down to about 80 health, but a nice flash here in the top lane. Yeah, Umbra's trying to trade this around, but he can't fight on Nuo right now. On Nuo almost getting the kill, is not able to flashes in, uses the ultimate, but a good flash from the Cho'Gath will get everyone alive. First tower is going to fall in the bot lane, and Every time there's a play on one side of the map, Superman, someone else feels like, nope, my time to shine. Oh, Umbris goes down. No way. The nice <laughs> actual prediction. I think there was a Prey Seeker that Umbrix sh sent out of that tribrush, and Oriana thought, hmm, if he's there, I know he has like basically no health. Maybe I'll actually be able to get that. That was insane. Infernal Drake goes down, and now the map definitely belongs all in favor of St. Thomas More. Two towers, a dragon in about a 7k gold lead when this tower falls yeah that's a massive massive advantage only 12 and a half minutes in here if they could get the herald too rel relatively soon then you know that they'll just be pressuring down that mid lane as well as oriana has been, now been roaming with her advantage she's tripling the cs lead here tripling the number of creeps killed across the map then her lane opponent you can see she's completed Tier 2 boots, a full Morella Namakon, a haunting guys to just the tier 2 boots essentially, and a lowly amp tome in the inventory of this Echo. Level 9 as well, down a couple levels from that Oriana.
Yeah, and Dreamy caught out a little bit in the jungle. Well, maybe he's not the one caught out as Tom Kinch is going to ult in. The stun's going to come down. Is Epic Evan now in trouble? He's trying to get time for Varus on the wings, but now Nyx in a lot of trouble does use get the slowdown, but Vayne just going to ult in. Nice ultimate from Nyx, but it doesn't get onto the Lee Sin in time and killing spree for the at 1.13 1, and 1 Lee Sin. Yeah, Jay's like, he's started to show up where his team needs him most. And honestly, you have to say, Varus needs to send out his ultimate much sooner than that if he wants to survive there. You can't wait until the Lee Sin's in range to land his resonating strike. And look at how much damage just from a couple of abilities from both Anuo and Allure Love. This mid tower, who needs minions for this tower? They're trying to just force it down. They do get it. Umbris will go in, but gets taken down. Allure Love with another kill. And this Bane is feeling confident. Yeah, definitely. 3-0 and 5. I'd be feeling confident as well. We've already completed the static shift for that wave clear. And as you said, they're just putting on the pressure here in mid lane. Anuo landed a really great shockwave earlier to get people down to about the health that they are here on blue side meaning they can't really choose to aggress even in a 3v5 situation here and this is just saint thomas more flexing the muscles saying we want that number two seed uh and we talked about umbrisk early on in this game he was four and one at one point now fall into five and four just hasn't been able to actually make that lasting impact in the game yeah, I should have just stuck to my guns when it comes to when it comes to my comments about a damage wreck side. You know, you can build damage and have a lot of pressure early and snowball your advantages, but if you don't stay and only pick fights that you know you can win with that damage advantage, then you're extremely squishy. And as you can see, Anuo kind of tracking this wreck side here. If if Trundle gets on top of him, look how much damage a Trundle with just a little bit can do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Trundle with a little bit of damage, but uh, Anuo has more than a little bit. Takes him down, summons the Rift Herald. They're going to try and knock down this tier 2 mid tower. The minions are all the way back at their tier 1. It doesn't matter. You know what? Rift Herald counts as a minion, right? He's going to take it down. Or she, excuse me. Yeah, that's just going to go down to the one headbutt and still 80% of that health remaining. You're going to see a lot of true damage hit that turret. You see the pressure that they're putting on here. Rift Herald still taking the turret and they're just going to go through. Epic Evan did not even have time to proc the Grey Health. He died so quickly, and now War Love feeling so confident, taking a chunk out of the Cho'Gath. They've got the inhibitor. They've still got Rift Herald, and they've got the Tomkins down for 10 seconds. St. Thomas More is going to continue to push. They're onto the first Nexus Tower. It is at half health. They are going in. Nyx taken low, but Lee Sin gets the kick down onto Umbrus. Umbrus is going to fall. Killing spree for Onuo. Lee Sin does fall to the Echo. The first Nexus Tower is going to fall. Trundle falls as well. St. Thomas More might be playing with fire here as the rest of the members, a three-man shockwave from Onuo takes them low. They're still pushing at the Nexus Tower at 16 minutes. They're looking to maybe try and end this and there's not much that Farmington can do here is another nice bit of damage comes out from Anuo. They're trying. Allure Love is going to get taken a little low, but uses the Tarek ultimate. The Nexus is exposed. Who are they going to go for? Nyx is so low. Gets eaten by the Tomkins. Does not go or does still fall in the end, but Orianna and Vayne are down and the push, even with an open Nexus, the push is repelled. Yeah, you know, they always want to look to try and end the match as soon as they can, but sometimes that ends up being a throw. You end up dropping a couple, three members overall. Uh, already fell in that little bit of a fight there. Now 10 kills total have actually come over for Pioneers as we might actually see another fight here. Dreamy getting caught. Yeah, Dreamy goes down. That is three members now completely off the map. Luckily, it's only 17 minutes, so, you know, there is no Baron or anything to maybe try and swing this game back into Farmington. And their Nexus is still open at 17 minutes. It's going to be so hard to take out these Super Minions. Yeah, it really will. There's no Nexus turrets to assist in that. And there's only a couple minutes now, two and a half minutes before that Baron will spawn. But the me Nexus is already open. You could just look for another five-man push if you feel confident enough in that kind of strength. And when you're up 9,000, almost 10,000 gold, you might as well go for it anyway. To be honest, I, I would like to see Fairfell just rushing the base together. You know, you, it once, as soon as you have that Tarik ultimate back up especially, then you know you can just run for it. 
who needs a Tark ultimate when you have a two item vein at 17 minutes? Cho'Gath is almost going to fall. Meanwhile, Rek'Sai can't even 1v1 the Trundle anymore. The open Nexus is being hit. The Vars ultimate's going to go down. It only hits on the Lee Sin though. Can Farmington stop them? Again, the Echo goes down. The Lee Sin has been eaten. They're trying to get him into... Uh, the fountain range, but he is going to fall, but it's still St. Thomas More with so much sustained damage, and in 18 and a half minutes, they're going to take down Farmington. Yeah, before even the classic surrender time could come out, 18 and a half minutes, there goes the Nexus, it explodes, 12 to 20 overall, and um, more than 10,000 gold lead in the pockets of Fairfell. Honestly, uh, an incredible showing. Just like we've seen before here on stream for Fair Fail, like just an insane performance out of mid. Bottom lane too, playing really, really well and top lane holding their own. And that Lee Sin coming back from behind. Yeah, absolutely. Such a good performance when it maybe looked early like Farmington was going to get in their heads a little bit. You know, this new patch, this new runes, can the snowball come in and Fair Fail just used their advantage across the map in every lane. Every time a fight happened, Superman, it wasn't just one fight. It was two or it was three. Every time one objective fell, it wasn't just one. And that's what propel propelled Fairfail to such a big lead so early. Yeah, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. I, I thought things looked pretty good there for the Pioneers just right off the bat because they, they kind of got a little bit of a lead. You know, that Rek'Sai was just dominating the map, especially the jungle, for a short little stint there. But eventually, going from, as you noted, 4-1 and one to 5-4, and four, you know that that lead has been thrown at that point. And for whatever reason, <laughs> and Fairfell try and end the game off of a single push. Not with a Baron buff, mind you. Just a single real Herald. That was a joy to watch. But yes, we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in to our first match. Again, that was Fairfail taking the victory over the Pioneers in a convincing 18 and a half minute game. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. Don't touch that browser. We'll be right back with our next match starting at 430.